the dictionary story. Let's see what this is all about. Back in the late 80s, when I was an intern at RCA Missile and Surface Radar, I worked with a couple of rather old engineers. One thing I learned was that really old engineers spent a lot more time getting their retirement accounts in order than actually engineering. And that's why they were able to retire and the current generation can't. But for a while, I was working in the main building rather than the trailers, and they had an amazing reference library uh, there that I still wish I had access to. Browsing original bound issues of the Bell System Technical Journal was kind of cool, at least to a 19-year-old me and the electrical computer engineering track. These days, they found they can be found online, but they also had some rather old reference books in the hands of engineers as well for desk reference, even if they really didn't need them. Yeah, so all these old uh, nerds that laugh at you for using the internet for everything, they're like, oh, you can't code anything without Google, can you? Like, yeah, well, how about I take that library out of your cubicle and see how much you can code then, motherfucker? Because I reference Google about as much as you reference those books. So better check yourself before you wreck yourself, man. You know, to wit, both of these guys had copies of the Webster's New World Dictionary. Physically, these dictionaries were identical. Blue cloth covered hardbacks and the logo embossed and painted on the front cover. The difference was the one was a 1932 edition and the other was published in 1948. One slow day, I had the chance to amuse myself by comparing various entries in the two. You yeah, remember I, that video I did a while ago about how the dictionary definition of Nazi has changed over the years? Yeah, that, that's fun. Look it up. Look up the dictionary definition of Nazi like before the Second World War and now. So we had no smartphones in those days to occupy our every idle moment, uh, nor even a real internet connectivity. It's true. It would be another five years before I got my first account. And even then, you had to find the good stuff without using search engines. I looked up yen in the 1932 edition. It said the Japanese currency valued at about 50 cents. In 1948, it said the Japanese currency valued at uh, 360 to the dollar. I know these days it more or less runs about 100 to the dollar. That's true. But it was an interesting historical lesson. I later found out that the uh, 360 value was an artifact of the occupation. MacArthur was told uh, that the word, for mon- the word for money also meant round, hence the Japanese hand gesture for money that looks a lot like the OK sign, as opposed to a Western gesture of rubbing your thumb and four fingers like you're sliding a couple of bills against each other. Or the happy merchant impression. That's what I do. So round equals 360 degrees equals 360 yen to the dollar, and that rate was fixed until we left. I never would have learned that without having uh, different hard copy editions of the same dictionary to compare. Those books were snapshots in time. This is an important lesson. You guys may think, like, what does this have to do with anything you usually talk about? Well, I do like to talk about how these fuckers keep changing dictionary definitions of everything, right? So uh, it's, it's important. So, of course, being a callow youth, I also tried to look up naughty words, and that was a real re- revelation. When I looked up masturbation in the 1948 dictionary, I gave a straightforward and fairly clinical definition. However, the 1932 version is what really shocked me. One expects the dictionary to be unflinchingly honest and factual and tell you exactly what a word means without editorializing. <laughs> Only if you're ignorant, that's what you expect, yes. But we've known this for years. But that was not so. The 1932 edition of Webster's New World Dictionary defined masturbation with just two words. Self-pollution. Yeah, I think the same Puritans from back then are coming back. And what the hell did that even mean? Apparently, there was enough to satisfy the editors in 1932. They included the word because it was a real word, but gave it a definition right out of an evangelical tent revival. The message being, we know uh, you we know you know what this really means because you're looking it up, <laughs> but this is what we think of it, and you should be ashamed. This is the shocked face of a teenage me learning that even the editors of dictionaries would allow bias to creep into their work, or perhaps creep is a strong word as I should consult a dictionary. Which one? From current year, a few years ago? A hundred years ago? It's important. The reason this story came back to me as something to write about is because some recent events. You see, even though uh, eventually the editors of Webster's, at least for a time, decided that brave uh, factuality was what people needed in reference to books instead of proselytizing, the pendulum swings. 
But when you're talking about physical books, publishing a revision does not make the older editions cease to exist. Which is why it's important, like not not necessarily to maintain a physical copy of everything, but uh, save off the different versions of your digital copies as well. Like before you update to the new version, make sure you save the old version just in case. Like we have to do that with video games nowadays. We have to maintain copies of of uh, video games in case there's a censorship patch that they sneak in. So we can just replace all the files they destroyed. Yeah, people can compare them, and that keeps you honest. Not so much today when digital references can be revised, editorialized, and even vandalized <coughs> Wikipedia <coughs> on a continuous basis. And often there's no record of what came before. In an ideal world, online references like Wikipedia would only be revised by enlightened individuals who want to openly contribute their knowledge to, of a subject to the world on a purely factual basis. Yeah, if only there was a way we could filter out everyone but those people, huh? Okay, stop laughing. We have seen what happens when political factions organize to control the narrative and seize the institutions like academia, the media, and yes, even the dictionary into the service of their side. Which side could he be talking about, I wonder? And it doesn't help when the other side still believes that factual information will win out simply because it is based in the real world and thus don't want to take on the organized opposition. They'd just rather be left alone and thus they remain unorganized. I mean, this is fine if you're willing to give up on uh, everything else, if you're willing to just go underground. But a lot of these guys aren't. Brandolini's law, we could probably shorten that to Brandon's law. Who knows? Also becomes a factor. Well, Brandolini's law, also known as the bullshit asymmetry principle, is an internet adage that emphasizes the difficulty of debunking false, uh, facetious, or otherwise misleading information. The amount of energy needed to refute bullshit is an order of magnitude larger than is needed to produce it. 100% true, man. And this is why a lot of people just stopped. A lot of us just don't give a fuck anymore. You know what? You can believe whatever shit you want. Natural selection is going to catch up to you in the end anyway. You can exhaust yourself trying to refute that garbage uh, of uh, that your opposition throws at, uh, at the wall like a toddler throws spaghetti waiting to see what sticks. No, this is why I say we need to use their tactics against them. Like, for example, when you're debating someone that you know for a fact, as soon as they start losing the argument, they call you a racist or a sexist or a pedophile or something like that and put you on the defensive because that's why they throw those accusations out. Like, as soon as they start losing, they call you a pedophile. So now the entire rest of the debate is you defending yourself, proving you're not a pedophile. And then they're free to make whatever other points they want and keep attacking you while you can't do anything because you're busy proving you're not a pedophile. When you encounter somebody like that, you need to do the same. You need to open up with that. When As soon as the debate starts, hey, so I heard you're a pedophile. <laughs> Just If you know they're not going to argue honestly, you shouldn't either. There's literally no point. No, eventually you retire from the field and the opposition goes wild making all the bullshit stick. Just read the Wikipedia entries on Sad Puppies or Gamergate or even the Trump administration if you want to see what one-sided editorialization looks like instead of purported neutral point of view that is supposed to be the hallmark. I, I agree in all three of those. I mean, I I'm familiar with two of them, but uh, like the Gamergate page especially is what ultimately led me away from Wikipedia because I, I knew I can't trust anything else written there. Because it, it's it's all a bunch of lies. Like, dude, I was there. I saw with my own eyes what happened. And then I see what Wikipedia claims happened. Like, oh. Yeah, these guys can't be trusted. Well, but wait, Dr. Mauser, you might say, or probably not. You started with the dictionary, the freaking dictionary, man. Why are you talking about Wikipedia? Even Wikipedia says it shouldn't be treated like an original source. They say that, but they know that people still continue to treat them that way, though. And why? Because what happens when something that is supposed to be as rock solid and reliable as the dictionary turns into a corrupted political propaganda engine like Wikipedia? Astute watchers are seeing that Webster's Online Dictionary. It's one thing for a reference to try to remain on top of current vernacular and take advantage of the immediacy of a continuously adaptable database to follow the trends. It's quite another when you debase that reputation for reliability 
and uh, factuality and try to lead the narrative by redefining terms in favor of, of a particular political agenda. So it's important to remember here that uh, they, they always say, oh, there's nothing political about my ideology. It's just common decency. Remember that. One example is the word for jab. Since Corona Chain started, people have watched the definition of jab go through at least three revisions that softened the definition from providing immunity to providing or to helping reduce the severity of an infection. Similarly, the definition of anti-jabber has been uh, expanded from originally being a person opposed to the use of jabs to also include anyone who was opposed to mandates. We, we saw that. One of the revisions catalog noted that the mandate was not actually a law, so Webster scratched law and substituted regulation. <laughs> Great, isn't it? And what's worse is that unlike Wikipedia, which at least includes a revision history, every change Webster's makes throws the previous definition down the memory hole. There's no 1932 edition to compare it to to see where the bias was or crept in. There isn't even a 1984 edition. <laughs> if it weren't for people keeping an eye out for these things, you might not even notice. Well, we, we do. We have an internet archive. We have archive.is. We have the Wayback Machine. We can, uh, we can maintain snapshots. It just takes more effort. As the bias became woven through the entire database, the and the edits aren't signed, so we don't know who is under the Scooby-Doo mask. See, it was old man Webster who was really editing all the dictionaries. And I would have gone away with it too if it weren't for you meddling kids. Even if it was signed, they could fake that too. I won't be too surprised when it turns out that pasting or posting outdated screenshots from Webster's is grounds for a misinformation ban on Twitter and Fakebook. I would not be surprised if it already was. I, I really wouldn't. I, I, I would actually expect that shit at this point. The thing is, if you're a custodian for what is uh, meant to be a reference, you are obligated to maintain a purely factual and politically neutral point of view. And why? Why would they care to do that when they know they can get away with not doing that? What's anyone going to do about it, huh? Nothing. Objectivity is uh, is the watchword. Those uh, Bell System technical journals would have been uh, useless as an engineering reference if all the articles were just people slagging other people's ideas because they rubbed each other the wrong way and documenting how they wished circuits work instead of conducting empirical tests. Oh, man, that's a nice sick burn as, as to how things currently work. Now, the dictionary and the encyclopedia must hold themselves to the same standard. The gift of the move to electronic media enables them to avoid being out of date, but this uh, it is also a foundational error to use that revisability as a political bludgeon. Of course, some of the blame lands on us for expecting our institutions to remain true to themselves simply because of what they are. Yeah, the, the price of uh, liberty is eternal vigilance. As soon as you stop uh, holding them to a higher standard, they, they'll get lazy. It happens every time. When what they are, when what they are, has been rendered infinitely mutable. However, on the other, what the other side fails to realize is that they trade on the institution's reputation for being true and factual to clothe their opinions in that uh, the imprimatur of truth. The more they debase and diminish the reputation of those institutions, leaving nothing the people can rely on for honesty. That's why they go to alt media. That's why they're trying to shut us down so so much. After all, if you can't trust the dictionary, who can you trust? <laughs> Merriam Webster's New Speak Dictionary, 11th edition. Very fucking honest right there. You know what you can trust? You can trust your own observations as to how the world really is. If someone's trying to tell you, like, oh, the sky is red, you can just look up and say, yeah, maybe at some points in the evening, but it's clearly blue. No, it's it's red. It says so in the dictionary. Yeah, you, you, can, uh, you can say whatever you want. I'm not interested in talking to you idiots. 